Good morning and welcome to the chat on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10 2. I'm David Lovejoy. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rhonda. And I'm your Tuesday morning edition of Chuckalicious, Chuck Williams. Good morning. I'm Ed Montana. It's good to be here. And right now we're joined by the uh, Commander McBroom. He's from the Panhandle Auto Burglary and Theft Unit. Uh, lots and lots of work they do to keep us safe each and every day. Keep your property safe. Uh, Commander, welcome to the show this morning. Uh, the last week, uh, you sent out an email, uh, a bulletin, about something we're starting to see a little bit more of. Uh, we've seen cars stolen, joyridden, or whatever, uh, usually for the reason for a secondary crime. They steal a car to go do something else. But now we're starting to see things yep. like online sell of stolen cars here in the area. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing on this issue. So at the end of the, at the end of the year last year, we uh, picked up a case where a, what we call a clone vehicle um, was recovered here in town. Uh, the person who bought this car on Facebook uh, for a much reduced price than what it would normally sell for. And he actually traveled to um, Dallas and bought this vehicle when he got it back here we found out that the title was a fraudulent title once we started digging into the vehicle we found that it was stolen out of dallas and all the numbers had been changed to make it reflect as a good vehicle oh. mm -hmm. what, they're getting bold aren't they what can you do to protect yourself number one i know the first thing you're probably going to say if it sounds too good to be true if you're buying a 2000 gently for 12 dollars, then you you probably ought to put a break on it huh? <laughs> Right. You can't buy a uh, 2021 uh, Ford F-250 Platinum, which is probably an $85,000 pickup for $40,000. That's That doesn't sound right. If it doesn't sound right, it's probably bad. So I, I'd be very cautious of that. Wow. wow. So we had, uh, I think the last time we talked, we were talking about what we called like a chop shop, uh, where yeah. they just dismantling the cars. It ha has that slowed down any? Is it picking up? Where are we at on that in the area? Well, we actually uh, last Friday ran a search warrant here in town and got another shop shop. Cool. Recovered two more stolen vehicles. So, yeah, that's that's two in the matter of of six weeks. So, yeah, not a good sign. Well, not a good. I no, have to it's admit, not. your percentages are kind of good too in the last six weeks. <laughs> but my God, it kind of makes me wonder. Uh, uh, that overall, it sounds good, but deep down, I don't know about all that. Yeah, I don't like those percentages at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you right there. I don't like that at all. You're seeing an elevation or a escalation of of the crime. It's not just kids stealing it or somebody just stealing it for the joy of it. It's uh, right. I mean, it's a hit to, to sell parts, and that's something we hadn't seen too much of. To sell cars, whole autos, or parts in other places across the land. Yeah, we usually don't see that kind of crime here. It's usually just stolen car, joyride, dump the car. Uh, these are all kind of next level crimes that we're seeing, especially on the clone vehicles. Uh, if you got bad guys are changing all the numbers out on a vehicle and getting a fraudulent title for that vehicle, that's pretty sophisticated for us up here. Absolutely. It is. It do you is. think the access on I-40 has a lot to do with that? Well, most of them, uh, the ones that we've recovered so far have all been out of Dallas and the Houston area. Uh, and we're, we've been working with the other auto theft units across the state of Texas and trying to find out who's responsible for this, because there's hundreds of them out there. Come to find out the other task forces in the area or in the state have been recovering a bunch of them that are associated with the ones that we've recovered here. So it, it's a big organized ring that's occurring. We're just trying to get to the meat of it, basically. Um, the, the what? Oh, sorry. The, yeah, the weather's getting nicer. We're traveling more. We're out and about more. Uh, Commander, what are a few tips that can help keep us safe, not only our vehicles, but our recreational vehicles, those ATVs, those jets, yes. uh, and, and personal property? What do we need to do when it comes to securing those things in our vehicles? So we're talking about property in our vehicles. Let's, let's not leave property in our vehicles to begin with. Then that stuff won't get stolen if you don't leave it in there. Uh, if you do have to leave it in your car, make sure you hide it in your car. Put it under the seats or in the trunk, cover it up with a blanket. Something to keep somebody walking by from seeing that inside the vehicle that'll keep you from getting broken into. And as always, I mean, y'all y'all preach this as well as we do. Take your keys out of your car and make sure your car is locked. That's the big thing. 
So, and once again, always the firearm. Most of the car uh, stolen firearms uh, are left in a vehicle. Yes, yeah. um, we can't absolutely do. take those firearms out of your car. ATV theft. If you keep your ATVs locked up in your garage or in your barn or shed, uh, that's the best thing to do. Out of sight, out of mind type of thing to keep your ATV safe. Do we still do the etching? Do, is that still yeah, a thing? I, that's where I was going. When I, when I was younger, we, we serial numbers. Yeah, we do etching. Uh, and I think APD does etching on property. And, of course, we do etching on cars and uh, catalytic converters, stuff like that. Um, but I think APD that still does that, yes. Are, are we still seeing a high number of those catalytic converter thefts in our area? I think they're down. I know across the state they are down. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, the once a month. We have a meeting with all the the auto theft units in the city of Texas, and in, in, even in Houston, they were down to almost nothing. So that that's a good sign. That is. That is. That's impressive. There's also uh, a lot of my buddies with the ranch rodeo and things. The ranchers are getting their trailers stolen. Right. You know, four horse yes. flat horse trailer. Or their trailer with their welder yes. on it to right. fix gates. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, it's a it's a cherry sitting there, and lock them up is uh, all I can say. Uh, Absolutely. I'm you, with you years ago, make sure somebody, those. Go ahead. Make sure you write those numbers down in your welders too. Keep those shield numbers, so if we do find them, we can identify them. That's right. that's a big thing we run into all the time. We we recover a welder, but we don't know who it belongs to. So, yeah, right. make sure you write those numbers down. Go to the Panhandle Auto Burglary and Theft Unit's Facebook page. They show you the last stolen items, everything from a, a Cadillac ATS, a New Yorker, a Dodge mm -hmm. Charger, uh, different equipment that's been stolen from people. Uh, so go and check that list. If you have any questions or you have a tip for the Panhandle Auto Burglary and Theft Unit, call 806-379-2871. Yep. Don't be a victim. Do the smart thing. Take those belongings out of your vehicle and secure it. Go ahead, Commander. So, and right now, I know in my tenant mentioned all the traders being stolen. We are having a high high number of traders stolen right now. So we've we've lost several in the last couple of days. So, mm -hmm. uh, and make sure you lock your traders up. Yep, it's a crime of opportunity. If you've got it sitting out in the front yard and it's not strapped down, they'll come get it. Trust yeah, me. The, Absolutely. The ball, the ball lock thing, or they run it. You run a chain through the axle right. to a, a post or, oh, yeah. or a carport. Uh, speaking from experience years ago, Captain Horn, I'm sure McBroom knows uh, Captain Horn and Haley. We were in California cooking. Mm -hmm. Right. On our way back, we stopped at South Point. This was in 2011. Pulled in and parked our big, my black truck with right. the big Coors trailer behind it. Right where the guys told us to park. We get out there the next morning and... Not a piece of broken glass. Oh, wow. And we went inside with the uh, security, watched the video. It took them 14 seconds to open the door, yeah. get in it, and drive off the parking lot. Those guys were pros. They were really good at what they did. We found the empty trailer about two miles from the hotel uh, two days later. The doors were open and everything was gone. Ransacked, yeah. Yeah, and, of course, my truck is... The, the policeman in Las Vegas, he said, a black F-350 long bed that went to over the border into Tijuana the next night under the cover of darkness because right. that's what they like, a diesel black truck to run Quit run, run medicine with. Oh, yes. Yeah, your street yeah, absolutely. Medicine. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, Commander, so, thank yes, you for all the hard medicine work. out of that truck. But anyway, it's yeah. it's a sick feeling. So yeah. lock them up. Do, do everything you can. Make it difficult as you can yeah, yeah. make sure you can be a victim commander thank you for you and your department and the part work you do and uh we'll try to help you out here as much as we can thank you and thanks for getting the word out for us we appreciate that all right be careful commander we're going to take a quick break beth duke up next right here on the chat on newsday amarillo news channel 10 2. <laughs> 